If you're a fan of Harley Quinn, you might be a fan of Kite Man. What's up? I'm John Stark from MacMovieGuy.com, your favorite blind film critic, and this is Kite Man Hell Yeah, the first two episodes. Watch. They, they did a two episode drop. I watched both of them for you. Uh, I did that for you. I, I sacrificed myself. It does have audio description, just like Harley Quinn does. I actually think it's the same voice, same team as Harley Quinn. And um, this feels very close to Harley Quinn in so much that I think every voice actor is basically reprising their role. The only switch here is very weird. Um, it's They swapped Giancarlo Esposito for Lance Reddick, uh, which seems odd. Uh, it seems like a, a choice that, like, did Giancarlo say no to doing Kite Man while everybody else said yes? <laughs> um... Was he not available to do Kite Man voicing? And then they happened to take Lance Reddick, who, by the way, sounds great. Great voice actor. But he's he wasn't playing Lex Luthor in Harley Quinn. Giancarlo Esposito was. So it just seems odd. Because now they have to replace him again. Like, now they have to get Giancarlo back. And then they have to have this weird thing if Kite Man goes on where either Lex is not in this show or... It goes back to being the other voice, and they make some joke about, like, <clears throat> and my voice is back to normal. I guess I got rid of that COVID. <laughs> Whatever. I don't know. <laughs> it's, uh, whatever joke you want to make, and Kite Man can make any joke. I mean, this this universe that we have, which is a beautiful universe, um, they still they still need to do my third show. And I, I have another spinoff. It has to be Bane. Bane needs a spinoff so badly. Bane is... I love Bane in this universe, and thank God Bane is in these episodes, um, because Bane is hilarious. What they've done with Bane in this series um, is so perfect. Uh, um, I'm such a, I think I'm more of a fan of Bane than I am anything else in this in this frame. Every time Bane comes on scene uh, in Harley Quinn, that whole thing where he went off and like learned to make spaghetti. I just, like, I'm like, can we just do Bane, please? <laughs> I just want to know the adventures of Bane. Um, but instead we get Kite Man and Golden Glider, who is, I guess, was in the show? I don't remember her very much. I feel like they're they're picking more and more obscure uh, Batman villains. There was, like, Polka Dot Man uh, is referenced in the second episode. So... Um, yeah, basically, there's a thing where they're like, the Legion of Doom uh, is set up, and for whatever reason, they need a flying villain. They're like, do we know any villains that fly? And uh, to to watch out, to watch this guy, because they feel like they have a, an attack that's imminent. And uh, Kite Man sort of ends up being that guy, and he does a terrible job of doing it, which or into the ire of Lex Luthor. So Lex sort of becomes a uh, kite man who's just this really sort of like dorky, uh, goofy, well-intentioned villain. He's way too nice to be a villain. Um, and like they, his like, the retorts that him and Golden Glider have back and forth with Lex involve things like, yeah, well, at least at the end of the day, I have friends. and I know what it's like to have friends. You know, because I've been there for, you know, who did this for you and who did this? And meanwhile, nobody actually likes Lex Luthor. Lex Luthor doesn't have any friends, you know. Uh, he's just like, he has like a completely different set of values. I don't know that he's the guy to like anchor a series, but at the same time, I don't know that it matters because this series is basically Harley Quinn. <laughs> She's in the, uh, Harley and, and Poison Ivy are in the first episode. Um, so yeah, it's, if they're going to keep just sort of overlapping the characters, um, it's just going to feel like, you know, the, uh, like a side, like a, a side season, like a special, special season of Harley Quinn or something that feature Kite Man. Um, I don't know how he finds his own voice while getting rid of the other characters. They do feature some, uh, of the other villains more prominently than than some of the other ones that they do in Harley Quinn. Bane, though, is notably heavily featured. They do introduce um, 
there's a new character that's introduced in the second episode that looks like she's going to be around for a while, um, who's the goddaughter of Darkseid. <laughs> um, whose cameo is hilarious, by the way. He's like, never hire a choir. <laughs> dark side, dark side. <laughs> so he's got this like choir that like follows him around. Um, yeah, they hire this sort of like uh, entitled influencer in the second part that, uh, and her cat. And I, they feel like they're going to become regulars. And there are other people at the bar that feel like they're not really part of the Harley Quinn universe, and they could be. Uh, they they are using the Queen of Fables, who was featured in Harley Quinn, although she could easily be discarded and put in this universe. But she's clearly voiced by Janelle James. I did not even need to look that up at all. I was like, that is Ava from Abbott Elementary <laughs> all over this. I don't even remember... If she was originally Janelle James, but like immediately when she opened her mouth, I was like, oh my God, Ava's here from Abbott Elementary. So yeah, um, different voice casts, but Bane is the same. Um, and yeah, when, when, uh, Harley and, and Ivy showed up, they, I mean, those two, they cameoed. That was Kaylee Cuoco and Lake Bell. So I don't know where this series is going to go. It, it does kind of need to build its own characters. It needs to use its own sort of subset of villains so it can break apart from. Uh, I, I don't know what they're going to do about the Lex Luthor thing because obviously Lance Reddick, he would not be able to film the second season of this. So uh, if this if they've shot a whole season that leans heavily on this Kite Man versus Lex Luthor thing like the first two episodes are, um, then they're going to have to replace him at some point. Uh, they're not going to kill off Lex Luthor out of the Harley Quinn franchise. So uh, Giancarlo's just going to have to come back. They're going to have to like pay him more or adjust his shooting schedule. Or, I know that dude does like everything. So uh, nobody works harder than Giancarlo Esposito right now. That man is probably simultaneously shooting things. They've probably moved to something to like the same location so that he can go from set to set. It's probably like on two sh simultaneously shooting two things at the same time <laughs> that just happened to be at the same location. Um, yeah, he gets a lot of traction. So uh, it, it's, it's fun. It's funny. I don't like it as much as Harley Quinn. Um, it's boosted a lot by Bane. The, the Bane stuff is, is I'm all over it. Um, the new character, um, whose name escapes me now. It's something really cool, too. Uh, the sort of influencer with a cat character um, is fine. But I also don't know. It's tough because she's introduced in the second episode. So it's like, is she going to be... How much of a driving force is she going to be? Because if I praise her and they, like, don't use her, and they're like, well, that was the second episode. You know? <laughs> she's just not in, like, the rest of this. I don't know. Um... I love Janelle James, uh, but again, I don't know how prominent her character is going to be. So it's like it's like a world of unknown. Uh, I think there's promise here in the first two episodes, but it's promise that is built based off of a fan base from Harley Quinn. Um, again, the audio description is great because the audio description on Harley Quinn is great. And this is just bleeding down from Harley Quinn. So um, I liked it, uh, but I don't like it as much as Harley Quinn. Um, and if, I think if, if truly, if they had, if they keep separating, um, I don't know which characters make it interesting enough. I don't know that Kite Man and Golden Glider on their own have been established well enough yet as funny characters to be able to anchor their own franchise. When you think about, if you consider the leads of Harley Quinn to be Harley and Ivy, um, they have much more of a dynamic uh, relationship between the two of them. They're both really funny. They both have these bright personalities. The voice acting is incredible. Here, the voice acting is okay. Um, Kite Man's earnestness is just, it's only going to get him just so far. Golden Glider hasn't really fully been established as to like who she is other than Kite Man's girlfriend. She has to really be established quickly as her own thing. That's the thing about the relationship between Ivy and Harley 
is that they are very distinct and different people. Ivy does not feel like she's here solely to compliment Harley. She very much has her own thing. And they need to develop Glider's thing fast if they're going to start disappearing the characters that overlap with Harley Quinn. Like, if we're going to lose Bane and the hilariousness of Bane um, at some point because he, he belongs predominantly with Harley Quinn, then what replaces him? And I don't... There isn't anything really that replaces the characters. Queen of Fables is also technically a character that originated in Harley Quinn, so I don't know if she's going to stay. So the, the characters that work the most right now are, they have introduced one character that might stay, but it's hard to say because she wasn't in the first episode. She was in the second episode. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I can't, based on a review of the first two episodes, tell you that, oh yes, she's good. she has promise. Malice, that's her name, Malice. Um, Malice has promise. Uh, but we'll find out. Anyway, um... I love Harley Quinn. I would give Harley Quinn an A all day, every day. Uh, when Harley Quinn wants someday ends, I'm just gonna cry. I'm just uh, every every time. I'm just like, please renew Harley Quinn. Please renew Harley Quinn. Please renew Harley Quinn. I love that when uh, when this whole DC thing and they started canceling these shows, they're like, but Harley Quinn's fine. <laughs> they're like, we're <laughs> Harley Quinn's safe. They they know Harley Quinn has fans. Um, and they're not going to mess with it. So hopefully they just let it go. I don't know how long it's going to go, but I'm down for whatever. Um, Kite Man? Yeah, just needs its own cast. So we'll see. Um, it's a big question mark. But for right now, I'm going to give Kite Man, hell yeah, a B. Uh, I, I think it does. It just needs to grow its own ensemble. As much as I love Bane, it's like, if Bane had his own show, I would love the shit out of it because I love Bane and I think he's been developed better than Kite Man. Kite Man was not a really developed character in Harley Quinn's universe, so not only do they have to work harder to bring him out, but now they have Golden Glider, who's also really underdeveloped, and they have to introduce their own ensemble. It's just a lot. Um, either that or else they, they have to always feel like they're just... Well, here's some more characters from Harley Quinn. <laughs> you know, he's, here's King Shark. Here's, here's Clayface. You know, I mean, they, they have to just keep coming in and out in order to support the series. Um, so then it's like, what's the point? Anyway, um, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And I'll see you guys on the other side.